If you've ever analyzed commercial real estate investment deals and you've looked at different debt options, you've probably seen interest only loans. So how do you actually build that into Excel and make it dynamic so that you can actually change this with the click of a button? Well, if you wanna model interest only loans, make sure to stick around because that's exactly what we're gonna cover in today's video. For first dibs on all new real estate financial modeling and career training videos, make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to be notified every time I release a new video. Now, if you're looking to break into the real estate investment industry, either as an investment professional working for another firm or doing your first deal on your own, you're going to need to know how to model different debt structures. You're going to have different loan structures based on the deals that you're doing. And one of the most important debt structures that you're going to run across is having an interest only component on your loan. So how do you actually model that in Excel in a dynamic way so you don't have to go through and actually change all of your actual cash flows, but you can actually build out a formula that's going to do this for you. Now I've taught over 10,000 students real estate financial modeling and deal analysis, and I've seen where students get caught up with this. So I've tried to break this down in the most simple way possible. So if you're looking to learn real estate financial modeling and you haven't been able to learn it from other resources, you're definitely in the right place. So what we're gonna do is actually jump into Excel and build this out step by step together. So let's go into an Excel worksheet and start working on that now. All right, so now we're in Excel and what I've done here is I've put together part of a loan amortization table. So what we have here is we have some loan terms and everything in blue text is going to be a manual input that's going to drive the model. So I have my starting loan balance of $10 million. This could really be anything, but we'll assume we have a starting balance of $10 million. We have our interest rate of five and a quarter our amortization of 360 months. So really the schedule at which we're paying down the loan is over 360 months. Our loan term is 84 months, so we're going to have to pay back any outstanding principal at the end of 84 months. And our interest only period is 24 months. And that's really what we're going to focus on in this video. So what we have here is we have our starting balance here, we have our interest payment, our loan payoff, and ending balance. And I've actually built all of these out already, but what we need to do is build out our total loan payment and our principal payment in a dynamic way so we can incorporate this interest only period. So if we change the interest only period to say zero, we'll have a principal payment from day one, but if our interest only period is set to 24 months, we wanna see our first principal payment and our total loan payment increase on month 25. So how do we actually build that? So let's start with our total loan payment. So to do this, we're gonna end up using quite a few if statements. And for our total loan payment, this is no exception. So we're gonna start this with an if statement, and an if statement is going to check whether a condition is met and returns a value if true, and another if false. So the first thing that we're gonna do is check if the month that we're analyzing, so this is month one in this case, and we want this to be dynamic, so as we copy this down, this is going to move with our formula. If the month that we're analyzing is greater than the term of the loan, so 84 months in this case, and I'm gonna hit F4 to lock that cell so this won't move as I copy this down. So if that's the case, if we are outside of our loan term, then I want Excel to return zero because that's going to be our total loan payment. After we pay the loan off, we won't have anything else to pay off. Now, if we are inside the loan term, so we are before we actually pay the loan off, we need to use another if statement. So this if statement is going to test if the month that we're analyzing, so D2 again, this time is less than or equal to, and we'll select the interest only period here, so B6. So now we're testing if we are within the interest only period. Now, if that is true, we're only going to be paying interest payments. So the total loan payment is really only going to be the interest payment. So to set this, what I'm going to do is set this to our starting balance for that month and multiply that by our interest rate and lock that cell by hitting F4 and divide that by 12. And that's going to get us our monthly interest rate on the deal. So that's going to be our interest only payment and that's going to be our total loan payment for those months. But if the value is false, then that means that we're going to be paying principal and interest payments 
for that month. So to calculate what that's going to be, we're going to use the payment function in Excel. And the payment function calculates the payment for a loan based on constant payments and a constant interest rate. So first, Excel is going to ask me for my rate. My rate's going to be five and a quarter, and I'll hit F4 to lock that cell and divide that by 12 because I want to make sure that my rate is on a monthly basis. Now, my number of periods is going to be my amortization period. So in what type of schedule am I going to end up paying this off? And I'll lock that cell. My present value is going to be my starting loan balance. And this is going to be a negative number. And the reason why it's going to be a negative number is because I want Excel to return a positive value. So Excel assumes we are investing this $10 million and we get out equal payments of whatever our total loan payment is. Our future value is going to be zero. We assume that we pay this off in full and the type we can set this to the end of the period. Then I'll close my parentheses and hit enter. And now I have my total loan payment of $43,750. Now I can copy this all the way down by actually just double clicking here with this black icon. If I just double click here, that's going to copy my formula all the way down. So you can see in month 25, now we have a full loan payment rather than just our interest payment. And that's gonna go all the way down to the end of our analysis, which in this case is month 132. So let's just change that formatting really quick. So I'm gonna hold down control and hit one, and I'm gonna go up to border and just make sure we get rid of this border here. So that looks much cleaner. So now the last thing that we need to do is calculate our principal payment. So our principal payment is again going to be zero if we're within our interest only period, but if we are outside of the interest only period, then it's going to be the full principal payment. So to calculate this, I'm gonna use a new function. I'm gonna call this the if function, but then I'm gonna use the or function. And the or function checks whether any of the arguments are true and returns true or false false. So all we want to know is if one of these two tests are true and if one of those two are true, we'll return the true value. So the logical test number one is going to test if D2 or the month that we're analyzing is greater than our loan term and I'll hit F4 to lock that cell or if D2 or the month that we're analyzing is less than or equal to the interest only period, and I'll hit F4 to lock that cell, and then I'll close my parentheses to end that or statement. Then we want Excel to return zero, because in either case, the value of the principal payment is going to be zero. If we're in the interest only period, we won't have any principal payment, and if we've already paid off the loan, obviously we won't have any principal payment. So that's going to be zero. Now with the way that we built out our total loan payment and our interest payment, our value if false can just be our total loan payment minus our interest payment for that month. And if I close my parentheses and hit enter, now I have my principal payment in that month one that in this case is $0. Now I can just copy and paste this all the way down similar to how I did it last time. So double click here and that's going to copy everything down and you can see in month 25, that's when I start my principal payment. So I'm gonna get rid of this border again, hit okay. And now what you can see is my principal payment begins being paid in month 25. So if I go down all the way to month 84, what you can see is we pay this off in full at the end of month 84, and that ends our analysis. So if we change this, if we change our interest only period to say zero months, what happens is we start paying our principal payment in that first month. If we change the interest only period to say 12 months, then we start paying principal in month 13. So by building out these formulas in this way, all you need to do is just change your interest only period or any of your other loan terms and everything will be built out for you in your loan amortization table. So that's how you can dynamically build out an interest only period in Excel. All right, so now you know how to build out interest only loans in Excel. Now, if you wanna learn more about real estate financial modeling, whether you wanna land your first job in commercial real estate investment, or you wanna do your first deal on your own, I've built a free three-part real estate financial modeling crash course, and you can grab that in the link in the description below. So if you're looking to land a better job in commercial real estate investment, or you just wanna be better at analyzing new deals, that course is a great place for you to start. So if you like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and share it with anyone else who might find this information helpful. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you 
in the next video.